Yo, hello, hello, welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and this video will be about different forms of trade, part 2. Welcome back, let's see what the Trump superhero is going to show us now. So the guy is sitting in front of his computer and he's saying, oh the internet is so cool, everything is free, Facebook is free, Google is free, YouTube is free. But then the Trump superhero is like, these things are not free my friend. Yes, they might be money free or Bitcoin free or Safecoin free, but they are not trade free. And what he means by that is, if I give you my phone and I install a tracking app on that, that tracks everything what you do on that phone, would you then consider it free? Of course not, because you traded your data for it. Or also, if I give you my bike and I say to you, give me five pictures of you naked in return for the bike, would you then say, I got a bike for free? Of course not, because you traded your privacy for that bike. So why are you saying then that Google and Facebook and YouTube is free when you trade your data with them because they collect every piece of information they can get about you and they show you ads, personalized ads. In front of every YouTube video there is an ad coming. So you are trading your attention to them. And the Trump superhero says Keep this in mind and store it well because the free deception will make your life a hell. And this is now all about the data trade. He explains it with the Robo Panda, which takes care of your grandma, he lets her know when she has to take her pills and when she has to exercise or when her grandson called in to check on her. But then the Robo Panda also sells that information to. Uh, companies like drug companies, insurance companies and app makers. So the Robo Panda is actually a charlatan. You thought he was a great friend, but now you realize it's a charlatan housemate for the convenience of the Robo Panda. Your grandma traded her data to the companies that own the little panda. And this data trade is such a huge thing that you won't believe it. So it's, it is going to be very interesting now. There are data brokers whose sole purpose is to mine people's data and sell it to advertisers or make other profits from it. And what are they collecting? They are collecting every piece of information that they can get about you. They collect in what house you're living in, with whom you are living there, the pets you have, the car you're driving, when you are traveling and where. They collect the social media you are using and your financial data and your health data when you're making exercise and your purchase behavior. So it's everything. You have no privacy anymore. And it has even spread into other domains like um, dating. Tinder is an example for that and also um, the browser collects your data, the websites are collecting data, um, there's open Wi-Fi that collects data, so when you are using it, from what device, what websites you're visiting. And in this case, the guy is like, that doesn't matter because I use encrypted stuff. I use WhatsApp so they can fuck off. They can't read my messages and shit. Because you know, people say WhatsApp has now um, end-to-end -end encryption so they can't read the message but the Trump superhero is like dude even when your communication is encrypted they still can scrape a lot of data about you this is called metadata and I think many people have no clue about this metadata thing and they just think they are safe they are secure if they use encrypted WhatsApp but they don't get everything around it can be collected for example when it is sent from where by whom, to whom, what applications are open, the operating system used. So the Trump superhero explains, they know you rang a phone sex service at 2.24 am and spoke for 18 minutes, but they don't know what you talked about. They know you called the suicide prevention hotline from the Golden Gate Bridge, but the topic of the call remains a secret. They know you spoke with an HIV testing service, then your doctor, then your health insurance company in the same hour, but they don't know what was discussed. 
So that's really this metadata thing. You can also watch um, that video here. Um, there are many videos implemented in that book just to um, showcase some more information, which is interesting. You can just click on it and it will open. Um, and it is becoming more crazy and scarier because of that thing which is called Internet of Things. Because that means now every device in your home will become smart, but it will um, collect all the information that it can get. Like whenever you use such things. For example, the bed you are sleeping in is not a stupid bed that doesn't know anything about you, but it knows when you are sleeping, when you are waking up, your sleeping pattern, when you went to the toilet. It is really crazy and crazy and crazy. It is also happening in supermarkets, it is happening um, whenever you travel somewhere. And an important point that also has to be discussed is these companies like Apple, Google and Amazon who make it cool to trade your data with them. And an example is the Face ID to unlock um, your phone, which is now implemented more and more by phones. And um, people think it's safe, everything is it's encrypted and these companies, they are protecting me and they care about me. But of course that's bullshit because that data is being used for any kind of profit purposes. Um, in this example the Trump superhero says they know that you watched a video ad about health insurance and that you spent 80% of the time paying close attention to it, then clicked on the ad and looked interested in it. They know that you don't pay attention to their in-game purchases notifications they know your age and your location and they know what makes you happy whilst you play their game. But don't worry, no one knows your face. So of course um, these companies can have access to, the, to that data. And uh, another example is the Pixel 2 um, from Google which might be listening in the background to whatever you're saying without you even knowing that it's listening. Or another example is Echo from Amazon, um, also the Amazon Store, Amazon Go, I've seen it in a documentary. It's a store where the payment is automatic, that means there are cameras and sensors in the store that track everything what you do, your facial expression, how you look uh, at products and your gestures and how you behave in that store. It's all about collecting data. The Trump superhero says these companies, they invade your home, pocket, friends, habits, likes and dislikes and pretty much everything else. He compares it with the past where it was uh, intrusive for many users to even allow a website to access your location. But nowadays it has just become a normal thing. Um, people are so accustomed to that because of these companies who make it cool um, to have no privacy anymore. And another example is 23andMe that tries to get your body's data now, even your DNA and all that. Um, it's crazy. If we think about Facebook and Google again, the two giants from the internet that reach billions of people, they collect every piece of information about people, what you search, what you click, the movement of your mouse pointer, your texts, messages, contacts, credit card information, everything. And they are also almost everywhere in the internet. Facebook is on 25% of all websites and Google is on 76% of all websites in the internet. That's insane. And what is interesting are the links here. You can click on them um, and you can download the data, what they know about you, what they collected about you. That might be interesting, can also be disturbing or surprising maybe also. Um, it's uh, definitely interesting. And now what many people might not fully realize is how huge these companies are and what kind of things they own. Because they own the most common and popular search engine, messaging apps, video hosting service, mobile app store 
translation software, social networks, maps and navigation, browser, email client, mobile OS, it's crazy. So now the question is, what are these companies making money off? Where is their income coming from? And it's not a surprise that they rely entirely on ads, or almost entirely on ads. So they only just want to make you buy something. And this TED talk is interesting. I don't know how she's called, but she's saying we're building a dystopia just to make people click on ads. And I can recommend, or the Trump superhero recommends all these documentaries where you can learn more about that data trade and um, yeah, get to know more information about that. Whew, that was pretty um, extensive and long, but it's interesting and important to understand that data trade because it's such a huge thing. And now I can try to say the rhyme of the Trump superhero, but I am not good at this. Um, the services, the cars, the toys and the gadgets of tomorrow will become entirely free. And that's not because we will migrate to a new kind of saner society, but because companies and governments will collect every data about you and me. To show us their ads, to advertise their brands, to know where we go, to see where we show, to learn what we like or what we dislike, to know us so well, we trade, who can tell? Let's move now to the next form of trade, which is social credits and citizenship. The guy is saying, honey, look, we are rewarded for good behavior on WeChat by the government. They give us free tickets to the Suckers water park. And she's saying, yay, so awesome, I told you that if we don't swear or don't make controversial posts on WeChat, we will get rewarded. And the Trump superhero is like, who oh, man, this is really, really bad. It is called social credit and it is going to ruin many lives. Don't be completely naive. Because you know, not only companies, but also governments have their interest of getting as much data about us as possible. And we see an extreme example um, going on in China, which is the social credit system. So it's basically that you get a score and that score is based on your behavior and you get plus points and minus points by whatever you do. But this is defined by whatever the Chinese government defines as good and bad behavior. I guess if you say bad things about the um, Chinese government, and if you show that your wrongdoings, for example, you get minus points. And if your social credit goes down, um, then you might be restricted in some parts or some points. For example, you might be not allowed to leave the country anymore and travel. Or not allowed to use the high-speed trains anymore. And this is what's going on in China and it is really crazy. But the Trump superhero explains even if this sounds maybe awful, it is nothing new because that's basically what every tribe is doing um, and they force people into different kinds of trades. Here's a scenario, um, the guy is saying, oh man, our healthcare system in the US is the worst, we pay a ton of money even for the most basic consultation, look at Spain, free healthcare for all their citizens, that's so, and now the Trump superhero says, unfree. The term free is the biggest scam online or offline, it doesn't matter. If you go to Spain now, do you think they'll treat you for free? Of course not, you have to engage into trades with them. You have to live there, you have to be a resident, you have to maybe have a job there and you have to behave well in the eyes of the Spanish government and you have to follow their rules and laws and respect them. Um, and only then you get um, access to the to healthcare. The Trump superhero says you trade your comfort, privacy, time, labor and more to the Spanish tribe for their healthcare system. Therefore, Spain's healthcare system is money free for some people, but not trade free for anyone. Another example is imagine you are from Romania and you want to visit the Grand Canyon, which is a natural place carved by millions of years of erosion and you wanna just visit it for your own pleasure and your own curiosity. You are a human being on this planet Earth, but you just, you, you can't. 
because the US owns the place and he won't let you access this place unless you have a special permission that you have to apply for. And usually it's like this, you have to have a lot of money to get that permission and then you also need to have money to get to the US and then to get to the Grand Canyon. Only then you are able to visit that natural place on planet Earth. But it's just, it's a prison if you really think about it. And Sasha also wrote an article about that. It's called Prison Earth and I can link it in the description. It's very interesting. Her blog is called Big Wall Small Sasha and she has many interesting blog articles. I can totally recommend them. You can read them on bigwallsmallsasha.com. Back to the book, the Trump superhero explains being a citizen implies you forcefully agree with certain traits. You behave a certain way and you are given certain things in return from that tribe. So the last part of this chapter is about other forms of trade, for example Google's reCAPTCHA, which is basically you have to prove that you are smarter than a coffee machine. But Google uses that to train their AI software. So you trade your intelligence and labor to Google through reCAPTCHA. Another example is sex for rent. A scenario is showcased here. The guy is saying, hey, you can stay at my place for free as long as you want. Won't ask you for anything except some favors like massage or sex, maybe household chores. You know, stuff like that. And the girl is saying, okay, as long as I don't have to pay for rent, it works for me. Another form of trade. And then there's also religion. The priest is saying, son, join our Christian church and you'll have a place to live, food on the table and safety. Come to church on Sundays and spread the word of God. That's all we ask. So, of course, that's another form of trade. And now the Trump superhero is riding on the big pink fat and sweaty elephant in the room and he's saying just don't focus only on money but focus on trade. It's like focusing on cancer but there are so many other diseases out there so focus on aging. So now the Trump superhero shows us the trade bubble. What you see in green are currencies like money, Bitcoin or Safecoin and what you see in blue are direct trades like influencer marketing or data collection and all that. And he is saying if you only focus on one bubble, fine for you. But Trump is all about the trade bubble which contains all of those smaller bubbles and that's our enemy. He is saying from A Money is one form of currency. B. Currency is just a representation of trade. C. There are lots of currencies. D. There are many trades without currency. Equals. Money is not the problem. Trade is. The last part of this chapter is now the normals and family of five. They are normal. They live inside a tribe. They use technology. They have an internet connection. They trade on a daily basis with everyone and everything. For example, the girl has to go to school, of course, the school is like want a secure future and to be part of our tribe, come to us 12 to 16 years and respect our rules. Dress the way we say, learn what we say, come when we say and stay for long as we say. And the parents have to trade as well, of course, on a daily basis. Companies are like you want food, house and medicine, give us currency. And on the other hand they are like, you want a job, have these skills and respect our rules, dress a certain way, behave a certain way and present yourself at certain hours. And the government um, is like, you want currency, have a job that we define as a job and give us a percentage of your currency. And we got these trades. Um, in entertainment, in the internet, you want to see videos, access websites and listen to music, watch our ads and give us all of your data, that's what we discussed a lot in, this, in that video today. And the gadgets are like, you want access to the latest apps and features and in general access to technology, give us currency and tell us what you like, who you are, where you are, what you want, what you do and give us as much data about yourself as possible. Oof, pretty intense, pretty long video today. 
but I think it is very relevant and very important. But yeah, this was basically it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. You know you can access all our materials on fromsite.com. And the next video will also be interesting because we will go into space and then back to planet Earth again. I look very forward to this. See you then in the next video. Take care and much love.